plaster on skin, it's exothermic, isn't it? As, it, as the plaster hardens, it produces heat, so you don't want to give them a burn or anything, that's why we cover them and make it comfortable. You want this as high up as your plaster's going to go, and they still want to be able to bend their elbow, so I would do it, you know, mm. up to sort of there. Nice smooth layer of that all the way around the arm. When you get to the thumb, I'll just make a little, pull that apart, make a little hole in it, and put your thumb through it. Yeah. And, then, uh, and where your fracture is, often good to do a double layer, because that's where all the swelling is going to occur, isn't it? Yeah. And then uh, and that's your yeah, soft band. So this, this is the plaster, so it's pre-impregnated plaster in there. Um, it, it depends on the patient's size. If you've got a you know, huge forearm and a big building, Laborer, then you probably need something that wide. If we put that on you, that would probably go all the way around your arm and effectively do a full plaster. So we don't want that. Same with sort of with the plaster, you want it down to the knuckles because you want they want to still be able to use their fingers and their thumb. So measure it from the just just um, proximal to the knuckles there, and then as high up the arms as you can go. So that's about the right length for you. And then how many layers of plaster do you reckon? I use about seven, seven or eight. If you don't put enough on it, it just won't be hard enough and they'll move and all the plaster will crumble. And there's your seven layers. When you're putting on a collie, you want it in pretty much a neutral position. You certainly don't want it really ulnar deviation and really flexed, too uncomfortable for a patient. But pretty much neutral, maybe a tiny bit of ulnar deviation, tiny bit of flexion. Your knuckles in that position, they slope back a bit. So with your plaster, so with this we're gonna Cut a little bit of diagonal off there, and that allows for your knuckles. That's going to slope back. You'll see lots of different ways of cutting this plaster for collies fractures, but as long as you learn one way. And you'll see the nurse practitioners will do different ways, a lot of people will do different ways, um, all, all equally effective. But that's for your knuckles sloping back. And then they still want to be able to use their thumb, so come in about an inch here, and then cut, just cut a chunk out about that sort of size for your thumb. That's where your thumb is going to go. And then uh, I just cut off the corners at each end so that they don't dig in and they bend their arm. And you flex your elbow. And then that's your colleague's plaster. And then that's going to go as a back slab like that. And that's going to go where your thumb is. And this is going to wrap around in there like that, yeah? You just dip that in the water like that. And that's wet through. And then uh, just give it a gentle squeeze. Don't squeeze it too much or all the plaster will come out of it. You don't want it so it's running and soaked. And there's your plaster. And then uh, to your knuckles, and that goes around your thumb there, and that's down. And once you've got that on, you want to get each end and fold around so you've got a nice smooth edge there, it's not going to dig in. And similarly with your fingers, you get a nice smooth edge. And then the final bit is just putting on that. Fake bandage. Just surprisingly feel nice and warm. Yeah, and it'll get hotter and hotter. Yep. So I'm um, you know, gonna just go up to the edge there, make it look as neat as you can. And, uh, and quite firm. You don't want it uh, you don't want it to be loose on them, so pull that quite firm. And run that down. When you get to the thumb, I just give it a twist through there. And one bit back around. Uh, you, know, I don't, you don't need to keep going around with that. But then we can uh, cut the rest of that off. And then once, you've, once you've got it on, then you want to kind of get their wrist in the position that you want, mm. want it to harden in. And uh, yeah, so as I said, you want it slightly under deviated, slightly flexed, so something like that, but very minimally. And, uh, just give it a gentle squeeze so it's there. And then tell the patient that it, it takes a good, it takes hours for that to fully harden.